<laughs> and we are live. Uh, welcome, everybody, to our SMARP live session on how to use video to communicate with employees, five hacks. And actually, if you've been following us on, on socials, you'll know that we tried to keep it to five hacks, but there are just so many great tips and tricks that we had to actually include a bonus one, so a sixth one. Uh, but you'll find out pretty soon what that's all about. Um, First things first, as with all of our sessions, what we like to do is kind of find out uh, where people are calling in from. Of course, we can tell from registrations that we have a truly global audience here today. But if you see on your screen on the right-hand side, you should have a little questions tab. Just go ahead and write in there where you're calling in from. Um, we really like to see those, those messages coming through. Also, throughout the session, you can use that questions tab to address, to send any questions to our speakers, uh, and we'll pick them up kind of as we go. And we see the messages coming in. We have USA, London, Richmond, Can we have oh, Ottawa, Ottawa, Canada. <laughs> there we go, Andrea. Manchester, Philippines, Philippines. It must be midnight wow. in the Philippines. We're not quiet, but yeah, we, we, have a, we have a truly global audience here. So thanks, everybody, for joining us live. Um, Real quick, I want to go to today's key, um, our, our honored esteemed guests here today. So we have three, uh, three really great speakers, people that have kind of dealt with internal communications, especially dealt with video, uh, using video to communicate with employees here to share their tips and tricks today. Uh, guys, it would be great if you could give us a brief introduction on who you are and what you're about. And Andrea, maybe we can start with you. Sure, my name is Andrea Greenhouse and uh, I'm here from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, I own an internal communications agency. We specialize in strategy and I do a lot of work in the area of change. And I started doing video very early on. So the first video I ever did, uh, people are gonna laugh, but I think it was over 20 years ago and <laughs> it was on a test date. <laughs> Um, so yeah, got a little bit of experience over a long time uh, um, with video. Uh, hopefully, the technology has has improved slightly from when you when you start first started out working on these. Uh, thanks, Andrea, so much for 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 joining us. And we, we see there are a lot of people from Ottawa tuning in. So your home your hometown crowd is here to cheer you on. Um, Marielle, how about you? Hi guys, uh, I'm Marielle Horsfeld. Um, I'm uh, based in uh, Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, well, that's at least my home office during COVID times. Uh, normally, I work uh, from our headquarters uh, in The Hague. I work for Aegon, an international insurance group with about 25,000 staff um, based in 20 different countries. And I was actually inspired by Andrea who talked about when she started experimenting with video and was thinking back really loudly. And I think it's, to me, it's also around 20 years ago and definitely technology was different, but it was in a similar setting where I really needed to reach out to people across the globe um, and not having just sound or written communications, but visual works incredibly well, I think. And I'm really thrilled to share our hacks with you guys today. Awesome. So thanks for joining us. You have, of course, you know, I've been following you on social for a while. You've had, uh, Aegon has had some pretty cool use cases. So hopefully you can, you can uh, highlight some of those for us today. And last but certainly not least, we have Jonathan. Jonathan, how about you give us a bit of an introduction? My name is Jonathan Tetzel and I'm the Managing Director of Feedback Films based in London. We are London's UGC internal communications agency and our clients include everyone from Google, RBS, GSP, TalkTalk, Talk, uh, Oxford University Press, just to name a few. And it wasn't 20 years ago, but 15 years ago I set up Feedback Films and what I wanted to do was make uh, the world a better place by uh, getting people more interested in politics. So I started working with think tanks, they wrote reports, no one reads reports unless you work in a think tank, how pointless is that? So I made them into short, sharp, shareable documentaries on YouTube and Vimeo. And surprisingly enough, I started working with large organizations who wanted something similar. And that's where it all started. 
Great. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you for joining us as well. I, of course, I've also been following you on social for a while. I love the like kind of short little little videos you make, and I know you're you're very vocal about the process of using video for to communicating with employees. So, really excited to have you and your your input here today as well. Um, <laughs> loving the accent, Jonathan. There you go. Um, <laughs> Many do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I, of course, uh, some of you who have, may have joined our sessions before, uh, you might know me. My name is Alex. I'm the product marketing manager here at SMARP. We're a employee communications platform that you can use to, you know, among other things, deliver targeted video messages to each and every employee. So uh, really happy to to host this, this bright group here today. Um, real quick, simple, easy housekeeping issue. Uh, 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 housekeeping rules or uh, concepts here. Uh, we have five plus one hacks. So like I said, we couldn't keep it to five. We have one bonus hack uh, prepared for you today. They're all kind of related to the practice of using video to communicate with employees. And we will be doing Q&A live throughout the session. So again, at any point, if you have a question on anything you're seeing on the screen, anything that uh, we're discussing, feel free to drop the question in the question tab and we'll pick them up uh, as we go forth. If we have time at the end, we can do some live Q&A, but uh, typically we get so many questions throughout the session that uh, we just like taking them live on the spot. All right, but with that, I think we can go ahead and get into our first first little hack here. And the first one's pretty interesting. Um, also kind of relates a little bit to one of the email invitations we sent out. So the first hack goes that you, sh that you should not start with, we need a video. You should start with why you need a video. And of course, video is such a, such a big topic, uh, such an interesting topic these days. People seemingly just want to do video for the sake of, uh, sake of video, but that is not always the case. And I can see Andrea running off to maybe tend to her dog. Was that your dog, Andrea? No. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, since, you know, since, since, since you're so, so jumping and excited about this hack, maybe you can start us off with, uh, yes. with explaining what we mean by this. Yeah, absolutely. Because this has actually happened to me many times. People come to me and say, we need a video. And my first question is why? And I always like to start with strategy. That's kind of my comfort zone and my wheelhouse. And the thing about strategy is you want, because you, you want to start by thinking about what, how do I want my employees to think, feel, and act as a result of watching my video. And in communications, if you have a strategy, you're understanding what your business is all about, how you win in the marketplace, and what behaviors, what people, your employees, what they need to think, feel, and act to have that strategy come to life. So that's where I start with a video. The, the other thing, and so that you know involves how long the video is, what material, what content it is, what messages are in the video, how the video is. Is it fun? Is it light? Is it serious? Is it educational? So all those things inform your video, your script, and everything that you're going, all that resource and all that work that you put into the video. And then the other thing is, how am I going to make sure that people actually see the video? The video is one piece, or it should be one piece of a bigger plan. And I, I like to use, maybe old fashioned, but I like to use sort of the hub and spoke model of communication. Your video is one of the spokes. It's going to drive people to a place where they can get more information or um, that it's going to start a conversation. So it's one piece of a multifaceted or should be one piece of a multifaceted program. And once when I was asked the question, you know, I had done a video for a client and people in the organization were talking. And so another person came knocking on my door and said, we need a video. And so I sat down in his office and I said, why? And, uh, so one video turned into a year and a half of work to kind of bring a strategy to life, to drive a culture change, to make um, what a rules-based issue into a human issue that people understood. So 
Starting with strategy is super important. Right. That's actually a good a good point you bring up, which is like sometimes we might think that, you know, we just need we need something for the sake of, of needing something like we need a video just because we need a video. But in reality, you need something a lot larger, which could like you alluded to, it could be a, a culture change, for example. And you're not necessarily going to do that by just sending out one video. It needs to be kind of a more structured, structured uh, approach. Uh, uh, Jonathan, Mariel, do you guys have anything to add here? Well, you never just need one video anymore, do you? You need you, you need um, lots of videos over a, a longer period of time. You need to be able to drop feed media continuously. I mean, Andrew was saying, you know, who's going to see this one video? I mean, that it's it's not realistic. I mean, look, the comms people need a a, a a strategy where if it's an event, these these videos need to be chopped up into bite-sized bits of information that ask particular questions to employees to get them to what I say to my clients is what do you want employees to do after they watch the video? Do you want them to sign up to the initiative? Do you want them to look for more information? Do you want them to just be aware of the key behaviors within the organization? What do you want them to actually do? And that, I suppose that then drives the video message, but it's never just about one video anymore. We need a lot of assets, video assets over a, a, you know, a prolonged period of time to really land messages. Yeah, and even maybe in addition to that, because um, I was actually, when I looked at our slide deck for today again, I thought most of the hacks you can, you know, sort of relate not only to video, but basically to any type or form or channel of communications. Because I can't count the number of occasions on one hand where people come to me and say, I need a town hall, or I need a presentation, or I need a poster, or whatever. You need an approach, and that approach, like Andrea said, starts with an objective. Um, and it's, in my opinion, never just video only as well. You often need maybe video and a live event, or video in combination with five written stories or three testimonials. It's, it really, really always, I can only emphasize again, starts with your objective, uh, mm -hmm. starts with your audience, how receptive they are, um, mm -hmm. and then you'll take it from there. Right. Okay, Andrea said really conversation starter. A video is such a great conversation starter and will start the ball rolling for much more cerebral forms of information like written, for example, case studies and whatnot. But we, we, we need a little bit of hype, a bit of excitement to get us interested. Yeah. I love that I love that remark about conversation starter, because actually if I look at me and my team and I within Aegon, we called our sort of approach to internal communications in general, we called it purposeful conversations, because we think that whatever you do, whether it's really a conversational approach or a more basic approach, it should at least always lead to a conversation. And whether that is conversation between staff or between senior management and staff, um, eventually when you want people to move, to change, to act, that starts with having a good conversation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you also need to understand what what uh, your employee communication preferences. Do they want video? Do they want and how do they want that uh, video delivered to them? Do they want it on their phone? Do they want it on screens in the lunchroom, which normally they don't want? Like, and what topics do they want? So when we do an audit, sometimes our clients are surprised by the the things that people want to hear about. Uh, I see a lot of great videos that are done and I think, wow, why wasn't that, um, didn't, why didn't that get more views? And sometimes it's because people are more interested in some other topic. And, and normally people are interested in their company strategy because that's how um, that helps them set priorities. They're learning for, they're looking for learning and growth opportunities because they mm -hmm. care about their career and they wanna learn and grow as a person. Mm -hmm. So understanding what your employees want is also a critical part of that strategy. And we were saying before, Andrea, I remember a conversation that you can actually find out what keep, uh, what your employees are, are, are talking about through things like Yammer or Workplace and the comments and the engagement in these particular areas. And you can drive subject matter and e e even the look and feel of the video. What you can do is actually 
take that chat and actually animate it in a video to show that you've seen what people are talking about and you can actually get those people that made the comments to take part in a video around a subject, which makes it so much more authentic. I've, right. I've taken the toughest questions that I've heard and made those the starring pieces of the video to address those questions right on. Totally. And I when I did this particular video, it got people like paying attention. It's like, yeah, I wondered that too. So what's the answer, right? Uh, guys, uh, like before we move, uh, we have a, a what, about a minute we can sp still spend here so that we don't uh, run over too much. But I wanted to pick out one question from the audience here because uh, Andrea had a great question on how do you get your leaders to understand that video is part of a bigger strategy rather than just, you know, we need a video. And maybe it sounds like a total open door, um, but I think for me, the key is to always ask questions in return. Um, it really dig into the why and how, um, what do you want to, uh, what is your objective, why? Um, and it's also my experience that sometimes at first, I mean, it's not as if people are always super happy. They ask for a video and they get 10 questions in return. But over time, and it takes time and perseverance, but if you keep asking those questions and after producing communications, feeding them back the metrics on what you saw happening, uh, they, you begin to build a track record where you show that you don't ask the questions for the heck of asking questions, but for the heck of doing really good, impactful communications. Exactly. All right, I love that. Um, Andrea, were you about to, uh, about yeah, to add to that? Add, I really, I really feel strongly about educating, um, everybody around you. Like we know communications, we know the power of communications. We know mm -hmm. that it can, uh, affect change. We know it can drive results. So mm -hmm. educating, um, your leaders and people around you about why we do things the way we do. They don't, they don't understand like the power of messaging. They don't understand human behavior and neuroscience like we do. So, sh so share that and explain right. wh why, and then it helps you have sort of better clients or better leaders or better people, people who are more informed about what you do. Well, I love that. We just don't trust our leaders. I mean, most people don't trust the C-suite, let's face it, you know, and if the more visual and the more authentic they can be, if they can look down the camera and as an employee, you can see the whites of a, the, the, the CEO's eyes as he's talking about the new strategy, you start to believe it. Read it on a yeah. piece of paper, it starts to feel like propaganda. And I think what we need right. to do is we really need to arm our CEOs and say, look, you know, part of your job is comms. It's 20% of what you do. You know, yeah. it's tough if you don't like it. You're just going to have to get used to it. And the more they do it, the more they will see results. As, uh, Jonathan, as Jonathan, I'm so glad you... you bring that point up because it's a good segue into our into our next hack here actually which is on showcase your people and jonathan you know you already launched into this and and we've had a lot of discussions offline about the, about this topic so maybe you can kick us off here what we mean by this so, so i would say you know if you're an, an employee uh, you know communications and you're making videos and just getting three or four hits yeah that that is not a nice place for anyone to want to be. The great thing about being in comms is when people like, share and comment on your videos and you feel great about it and it makes you feel good. I mean, we don't get many pleasures in comms, but that is one of them. So if you really want to uh, see a video land successfully, get disseminated throughout the business, you're going to have to use your people in that, in that video. And that is a great motivator. Being a part of a video, um, you know, a, a user-generated communications video, it's, it's a great experience. A lot of people haven't had that before, and it's a little bit out of their day job. And it builds morale and fun and whatnot. And then those people will disseminate it. And you'll find when your colleague shares a video, you watch that video a little bit better than another one from the 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 the, the, the mill of comms, you know. And right. I, I think so. So one, this isn't two answers. You've got to showcase your people in order for the video to land successfully and have a great morale experience in doing that. And a, a good experience is um, Talk Talk, which is a large um, telecommunications company here in the UK. They they had offices all around the UK, 
and they moved to one central office and they changed their business plan. They called it one team and they wanted all these separate um, you know, departments to come together and focus on what they can do to, to focus on one lot of metrics. And each individual team had a chance to make a video in their own style to say how they were going to, you know, implement measures to become one team. And I got 17 videos with all these, you know, people that come up with their own styles and, you know, everything from, uh, you know, uh, goggle box to news reporter style. They even give us, you know, edit notes telling us what music to put in and where to put transitions. And it was such a creative moment. And it was shown on Plasma's uh, screens throughout the business. And, and, and people watched and commented on it. And I've never seen anything bring an organization together. And that was what the purpose of that was to do. And so I would think that you've got to showcase your people if you want your people to watch it. Nobody wants to watch people they don't work with. And I think ultimately the second part of this showcasing your people is that internal communications professionals have to start thinking like TV producers these days. And they have to think, you know, what talent am I going to attach to this video in order for the message to land successfully? Now, it can't always be the CEO or, you know, the, the, the C-suite, you know, they pulled out all the time. You've got to start thinking who's going to deliver this message successfully, whether it's on diversity and inclusion, whether it's on, you know, for example, your staff rewards. And one thing recently that I've been working on is, is obviously very prevalent at the moment, people going back to work and feeling safe to go back to work now that there's been certain COVID, uh, you know, um, measures put around the office. Now, I really didn't want... This, these films to be fronted up by, you know, um, the CEO, because you never see the CEO on the shop floor. You know, it's, they're, they're, they're not there very often. You want, to, you want to see, you know, your colleagues or even the receptionists that you say hello to, to every, day, every day. You want them to do these tours showing you where the hand sanitizers are, how many people are around in meeting rooms. And, and actually, when they went around and they did these tours, they landed so successfully with their colleagues because it didn't feel you must go back to work and look what we've done for you. It, it just landed, um, you know, really conversationally and, and, and people didn't feel sort of forced. It felt natural. It actually quelled their fears. And that was the purpose of the video. And that is all down to who you, who you cast in these videos, you know, how you make sure that, you know, people are going to listen to them successfully. So if you don't know your people, you're going to really struggle to find the best person for the job. So you have to sort of get on the floor and start talking to people. Right. I, I, I love I, I love that, like kind of really emphasizing the fact that, you know, people want to hear and see from people they work with rather than people that they don't uh, don't necessarily work with. Uh, when we spoke about this topic offline, Marielle and Andrea, you guys both had good examples of utilizing this hack in the past. Do you guys have anything to add? Yeah, well, maybe an example is what we did um, on Instagram in the past year uh, and we actually started using Instagram maybe not even so much and I'm talking about a group account here and uh, not even so much towards the outside world but it had we noticed it had a really strong effect on yeah. employees um, yeah. and we started basically handing over the Instagram account for a couple of weeks every time in a row to a colleague or a group of colleagues who were kind of focused on a specific topic or were from a, uh, from various countries to showcase how they were experiencing life within Aegon. And that actually worked really well. But I was also thinking, Jonathan, when you were talking, um, there is another side to showcase your people as well, because uh, you focused very much on the non-C-suite people. But I would almost add to showcase your people, C-suite are people too. Um, and what I would say <laughs> with that is that there are different ways to portray your C-suite. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a suit and tie in front of, in our case, a blue background, but it can also be in a more natural environment. For instance, like a video we did about, you know, different ways of mobility pre-COVID, by the way, back in the days that people were actually moving to the office almost every day. But we did a video with our CFO who cycled to work from where he lives. And not, you know, it was not one of these awkward videos where people would think, hmm, did that guy ever cycle before? Because it was literally something he does very often. And in a different setting with someone who cycled with him and spoke with him. So I would I would like to add to showcase your people 
C-suite are people too. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I, do, I do love yeah. that. I, I remember yeah. one time asking a CEO to do an unboxing. You know, they've got, they've got these things called unboxing challenges on, on, the, on the internet. Um, you, and, and basically, I got the CEO to unbox one of the new products that they were launching in the company. And they, were, they had to plug it into their, own, you know, uh, into their own home and set it up like a customer would. And I made a little video out. And it worked so well because all the little things that the, the CEO was saying that, you know, this is giving us eight times faster. Um, you know, these were all little affirmations that the sales team could use when talking about the new product. And who better to hear that from and, and, and trust from than the CEO? It was a kind of like, it almost felt like a kind of undercover boss kind of switch up where you bring the boss down to the level of the employee and it, the, the information just flows so much more faster and you take it in because there's an instant respect. <laughs> Right. I think, uh, I mean, I think that too, one of the things we find, uh, we look for is where, where do people want to get their information? And some, some uh, people want information from the CEO. Some people want it from influencers or colleagues. So understanding that is really part of, of making sure that you're profiling or showcasing the right people in the right situation. Uh, there's other, there's two other things that came to mind when I look at this hack. One of them is a lot of problems in organizations stem from the fact that there's silos in organizations. So there's, you know, and there's a lack of understanding between marketing and finance or um, people in one office versus another. So showcasing your people doing different roles a day in the life of or whatever it is helps helps break down those silos and create that um, cross-functional understanding that's so important to building a really strong organization and the other thing that i think of when i look at this hack is and something we've all learned um, or is a lesson from covid is that this is about people and and we need to, we need, it's okay to not have the perfect video. And it's okay if um, Joe from sales or Marta from finance, um, you know, makes a little bit of, um, of a mistake in, in the video. And uh, so again, you know, 20 years ago, everything had to be perfect and you spent a lot of money to get it that way. That doesn't matter anymore. What it is is, is What's important is to show people being themselves, the, the and all you know, they're the good, bad, and the ugly kind of things. So I think it's important. Right. The dogs barking in the background, yeah. the bloopers, whatever it is, <clears throat> we're all human, and that's such an important message, especially right now. Right. right. Yeah. I think. I think uh, that uh, you know. Uh, it's kind of ironic bringing up the the dog, given that you jumped out of your seat just now to to to, <laughs> to close the door. But but I love it. Very topical. Um, hey guys, in the interest of time, I think uh, we'll we can go ahead and move on to the to the third hack. And this one for me especially was was shocking. You know, working in working in a, in, in a marketing function where we try to keep our our videos and messages short and, and sweet. But not every video needs to be under two minutes long. And Mar Marielle, you especially had a very good example of this. So maybe you can uh, take us away here. Yeah, well, you, you kind of <laughs> introduced this one really nice because I do think every video needs to be sweet. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but I think, yeah, you can leave out the short. Because uh, short is only relative. Um, and obviously, we always uh, in my team to try to keep videos concise, um, come to the point as quick as you can. But sometimes you simply need more time. When, and a good example, I think, was that um, in May of this year, um, we had a new CEO starting in this new role. And obviously, normally, a new CEO might go on a series of town halls like a roadshow to get to know people uh, in the first month. Um, yeah, and then there was COVID, so that really changed the whole situation. And we want to give him a good start to all staff. So we recorded an interview with him. And I think it was altogether 18 minutes. And yeah. some of you might now look completely shocked. Yeah. 
how on earth can you produce an 18 minute video for your staff to watch? Um, but we did because we thought he had, you know, he had joined a company in March, had some time sort of really behind the scenes, really, you know, formed his first thoughts and ideas. And we really wanted to give him time to share that perspective, but also for people to kind of get to know him a bit on a more personal level. To, uh, it was our objective that after that video, people would have a first thought about who is this person? Who is he? As, uh, what is he like as a leader? And what are his first observations? And then, yeah, still 18 minutes. Wow, that's a heck of a time. But obviously, we we send it and we offered it really directly in an all staff message from that same CEO. And we introduced it that way. We told people or we let him tell people, I need a bit of time to, you know, give you a first impression. And it was, you know, it was almost a simple hack too. We made him say, so, uh, yeah, so, hey, you need a bit of time. You need like 15 minutes or 18 minutes. So, get yourself a cup of coffee, settle in, um, and it's the start of a conversation. And a lot of people watched it because we had really good metrics, but we also saw that I think the average time that people kept watching was over 15 minutes. So most people basically looked at it until the end. And that's just one example. And obviously you can't do that 10 times a year. And there are also, I think it's always a great challenge to say about certain things. Okay, let's try to do half year results in 90 seconds or something. And that works right. too. But yeah, well, I can talk about it forever. But my point <laughs> is basically, as long as you balance relevance and time and manage expectations with your viewers, a video can basically take as long as you need. I like that. So you managed to get people to watch it for 15 minutes on average. That's, you know, yeah. that's... That that is impressive, uh, Jonathan and Andrea. What, what do you guys think? Any you know, uh, short, long? What's what's your what's your poison here? You go, Andrea. Don't go. Don't okay. all go at once. <laughs> well, I have to agree with Muriel. Um, and when you think about uh, videos on YouTube, like I like to use videos to help people learn things, and you can't learn a lot in two minutes. Yeah. So. Because yeah. video is a powerful tool because it can show you, you know, I can learn how to change it, like fix a toilet on YouTube right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can, I can do anything. Like my kids can do anything. They just look it up on YouTube. And so, so yeah, having, um, I think what Muriel said around, you know, relevance, create expectations, um, make sure that it's to the point is, is pretty important. I also think that if you make it, easy to watch you know not complicated language make it a little bit fun add a bit of humor if you can uh, all those things make make the two minutes five minutes or 15 minutes go go by pretty quickly exactly uh, uh, I, I suffer from a very very short attention span unfortunately and I, I'm not saying that everything needs to be under two minutes, but if you're going to get my attention, it has to be sort of roughly that's it. And, and, and this is the thing about the video, and the thing I say to my clients as well, if they're, if they're listening, go, I'm like, the video doesn't have to do all of this stuff. Yeah. You know, all, your whole comms plan is not going to be crushed into this video because, I, I, you know, that's not how... That's not how it should land anyway. I mean, recently right. doing something at GSK and, there, and it was all about learning and development. And, you know, I, I hit them with a video. And the first question was, ever had a bad manager? Now, we've all had bad managers. You've got me hooked. You know, if big letters come up, ever had a bad manager and ask me a question, I'm going to find out a little bit more about this video, you know, about how they are, you know, uh, making their managers the best managers possible through it you know, new managers portal, you know. The, the thing is you have to you have to just stop people because people have a lot of stuff to do. You've got kids to pick up from school, you've got, you know, and you know, training to do, you're running all over the place right now. And also, you know, with COVID, 
it can, you, you want people to kind of listen and then if they need further information, you won't find that. And you always find when people are interested in going to find the information, it always lands so much better than when you force it down their throat and maybe, you know, a 30 minute video. But I must admit, I've made all lengths of video and I have made video that, are, you know, I have run on to 22 minutes about um, tax, really, you know, for, for tax accountants, it could. But that's because that's what they want. They want that level of detail. And if they want it, they get it. Right. I think, Jonathan, yeah. you made a good point that people are busy. And that's always something's in the back of my mind is people have a job to do. And our our job as internal communicators is to help them do their job, to give them context, give them skills, help them understand how to think, act, and feel, um, how to behave in the workplace. And right now, that's even more difficult because you're not in the workplace, you're at home. So making sure that the video helps them in their job and doesn't is versus a time suck is super important. If, if it's helpful, for me and it helps me do my job better and faster uh, with some more competence it helps me thrive then that video is gold if it's just a time suck then i'm i'm gonna be done after 30 seconds yeah you know yeah yeah totally yep fun fact i mean i like how you know in the beginning we were talking about how video is such a great tool for learning uh, fun fact i a few weekends ago, learned how to do some electrical wiring thanks to YouTube and, and managed yeah. to do some electrical wiring. I'm not an ele electrician by trade, but it is possible. Um, but I think uh, let's go ahead and keep, keep moving. Nikki, I see you have a great question in the chat there. Hopefully that's something we can address uh, during this next hack, which reads, or actually maybe in hack number five, but let's do uh, hack number four first, which is leverage the video camera that employees carry day in, day out. And now, Jonathan, you already mentioned earlier, you, you mentioned the, the three letters, UCG, user-generated content, and all people seem to have a really powerful video camera in their pockets these days. Uh, maybe you can lead us off with this one. Well, I think now that if you're a comms person and you obviously you need content from your people, you're going to have to ask them to film on their phone. You know, it's just, it's, it's just really, you're going to have to go out and say hi, you know, um, here's a couple of questions, you know, filming yourself and sending that through. That's that's just how it's going to have to be because you're not going to have your internal video team, you know, book out a, yep. a, a meeting room now and, then, and set up a horrible looking shot in the corner with a fan, you know. Now you're going to have real authenticity. People will have to film themselves. And actually, that isn't easy. You're asking people um, to become a producer and a director all in one shot when they maybe had no experience of filming themselves or how the, the, the rules of you know editing and how to film themselves and that, that can be quite difficult and a lot of our time at feedback is actually spent giving tools to people showing them you know apps on their phone like filming pro which basically turns your phone into an amazing and um, camcorder with the you know kind of audio levels that go up and down because sound is the most important thing when you're recording yourself. Yep. Agencies like us, we can do anything to an image, but really when it's bad sound, it's really difficult. So we spend a lot of time showing people how to film really um, you know, smartly on their phone and then also how to send the files to us directly. <laughs> that can be an absolute nightmare. So, you know, but we, we've now streamlined that process with, with, with so many clients sending us footage in from all different places. So we've got a cloud system which editors then can then take their, their little project work on. We have such fast turnarounds to this. I mean, I'll get footage in the morning and it'll be, you know, graphics subtitled and, 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 sent, and sent for them to put onto their um, the back end of their uh, intranet the next again day. So it's, it's so, you know, the, the speed of this is so important. So you don't want to be held up in that, that way. So that's one thing. That if you don't currently, if you're not currently doing that, then you know, get in touch with us or you know, go online and find out how you can smartly and you know, efficiently get content from your people at home with their smartphone. Because trust me, most smartphones have a 4K camera in them, and people know how to use them. The mm -hmm. second thing is, your smartphone for a comms professional has to be your biggest tool now. You know, comms people, I think, are the pollinators of any business. They're all over the place. They're involved in the highest level meetings, but they're also involved in the sort of low, you know, down on the shop floor with their people. That is an opportunity. When you're finished a meeting, just say to them, you know, 
you, you know, the FD, look, I'm going to grab you for five seconds. I just want your four top tips on our performance in the last six months. You know, I'm putting together a little video. You can do that. You can start gaining, getting content that way, but you have to start to be confident doing that and asking the right questions and being able to, as I said, to start thinking like a TV producer. If, you, if you're a, or, you know, on a, producing a TV show, you're reading something in the newspaper and you're phoning up a contributor and asking them if they'll get involved in your TV show. You're going to have to start doing that with senior people and all people around the organization. Can I stop you for a second? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Because you're going to get such great content. Nobody else should get, get that content but you. You're the, the, you know, getting agencies in to film people it's just a little bit 80s these days, you know. You know the questions to ask. And if you work with a, a, a really good agency that can edit all this together really fast for you, then you're really, you know, you will change the way your business communicates. And it all starts with your smartphone. I, I love all of that. And uh, I, I'm also especially interested to hear, you know, given given this kind of advancement and what we've been going through, Andrea and Marielle, you guys both mentioned that it's been around 20 years since you started started <laughs> doing video uh, back in the day, how do you guys feel now about the uh, the video cameras that we all have in our pockets? Well, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. It makes it a lot easier, that's for sure, and cheaper and more authentic. And I love all of the things that Jonathan said, but the one thing that I, I've run into is, and even myself, like I'm not comfortable in front of a camera. Um, and so it's finding a way to make those make employees, whether it's the CEO or uh, the person uh, on the front lines, finding a way to make them comfortable in front of the camera. And one of the ways that I've found is to, like Jonathan said, start asking questions and have the conversation with them. Then it becomes a lot easier. And you can even do that, you can do it on your phone, but you can even do it in things like teams. You can you can have a conversation yeah. with teams and record it. Um, I have a client who the CEO was in on one side of the country, and if you know Canada, we're a pretty big country, and the uh, VP of marketing and communications was on the other side of the country, and it was really important that they get in front of. Uh, employees and so they did it on teams and they recorded it and it was a conversation it was like what's on your mind um, so if finding finding ways to make people because we're not all natural on camera um, so you want to make sure that that you find a way to make it easier for people totally. right uh, there there are a few good questions here kind of um uh, related kind of related to tools I saw Maggie picked one of those up but maybe do you guys uh, this is a you know super tactical question here like what kind of tools uh, do you use to edit and save videos when you get this because Jonathan you meant you mentioned that you know files can come in from from employees and they're sending them in any kind of formats and uh, is there any kind of wisdom you can share there yeah I mean basically the way that we work it is that we uh, I mean, we've over seven editors here at Feedback, and they are all working from home right now, yeah? So I mean, usually it would all come in, and we, you know, you see it on our server here, you know, it would all come in. Now, uh, what I have to, what, what I get people to do is as soon as they finish recording it, right, don't leave it languishing on your phone. You're likely to delete it or something, but as soon as you finish recording it, right, to, what we use is we transfer yeah so it's www.wetransfer.com it's very industry standard and literally it says send a file now if you've got your agency's uh, email address or you know whoever you're dealing with with the video the comms person literally press you know put in the email address and send it off straight away and then they'll have always that link for at least 30 days that they can you know send it on to their agency or, or, or start to edit themselves. But I think you have to do it like in sequence. You have to do it straight away or you'll forget to do it. It'll become more complicated. And, and, and then if you're waiting on footage to be sent in, it's really holding up everyone else, you know, so it's, uh, it can be an issue. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, there's, you know, um, lots of questions apparently on on the types of tools, uh, tools that, that are in use and probably this, you know, even something that we might be able to follow up with after this session, you know, uh, uh, list we out some, some interesting film. 
and to edit, you know, you 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 know, as an agency, we use uh, Premiere Pro, um, no. but yeah, and After Effects, but they're they're yeah. all really high high, high level industry yeah. stuff. <laughs> Maybe I, not something you want to start on your phone. If if anybody's interested, I edit my videos with iMovie. It comes with it comes with Mac. But don't look at don't look at my editing skills. It's not it's not, not nothing to write home about. Um, all right, guys. I think uh, we can go ahead and keep keep the keep the ball rolling. We can go ahead and move to hack number five. And this was there's a few questions kind of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, related to this, uh, related to this topic, and uh, it's really this hack number five is about finding the balance between videos that employees want and what corporate thinks they need. This kind of ties back to a lot of what we've been talking about. You know, people will come and say, "We need a video," and then you know, while well, corporate thinks that they need a video, employees want another thing. Um, I don't know, Mar Marielle. We had some discussions on this. Maybe you can lead us off. Yeah. Um... There are a few, and I, I did also pick up on some of the questions there. Yeah. I saw, for instance, that Nikki was asking uh, how yeah. you can encourage people to give feedback or how you can create a dialogue, because I actually, yeah. uh, on the question how to balance that, um, I think yeah, the answer would almost be too simple, but yeah, create a culture of dialogue, a culture of feedback where you really ask people what they expect, what they want to hear. Also be realistic, because as an, a large corporate, you have a certain direction, you have a strategy, and you need to find a way to take people along in it. But by talking with people, you can figure out how to address things, what works best, what really resonates. Um, and there again, yeah, it's so nice, all these hacks kind of tie into each other, because um, video is not the only thing you do. And maybe as an example to make it a bit more vivid, I can use the example of uh, the communication we started with our new CEO. Yeah, obviously, uh, sort of the kickoff moment was this very long, extensive video interview. But at the same time, we also launched a special email address uh, where people could address basically every type of questions. And we would make sure that already starting in that video, people would feel really invited to ask whatever they would want to ask. But what we also immediately set up was sort of a rhythm of about two to three times a week, our new CEO um, meets with a group of employees. And there actually COVID worked for us because back in the day before, he would have needed to travel around the world and now he can really easily via Teams meet with people. And it's not, you know, don't misread me, it's not big town halls where he is addressing the people. It's literally an informal setting where he, for instance, joins a departmental meeting or um, a stand-up in an agile project. Um, very informal departments don't show sort of what I always call the Instagram version of themselves with 20 PowerPoint slides, but he is part of the conversation, which is a way for people to address their concerns, questions, whatever, and for him to hear how people respond or react to the stories and the, the messages he has been putting out. And then again, what we hear there, uh, what, what he brings back from those meetings, we use that in, for instance, the next video or a next uh, executive board newsletter. So we basically create, I would almost call it a, feed, a feedback loop, uh, where every channel we use ties into the next one. Um, and with this, mail, this really simple mailbox almost at the heart, because there we see that an increasing number of questions comes in because people begin to recognize, hey, if I ask a question, I get an answer. And if it's a big, bigger topic, it gets addressed in a video or in a newsletter or in a podcast we do with him. And then again, over and over, he keeps repeating this invitation. Please let me know. Um, so yeah, dialogue, conversation. That's really the way, I think. Consistency. Yeah. I, I think that yeah. very question shows you that there's there's a rift. You know, if there's if employees want one thing and corporate thinks they need something else, then there's a problem or a lack of understanding, right, between corporate and employees. And yep. the, the, the as Muriel said, it's our, our job to bridge that, help that understanding, and and 
making sure that we're aware of the questions and what employees want is is super important. And I believe I have one client who talks about basically radical candor. So you are allowed to bring up anything, and that's the whole concept of psychological safety. And and we're encouraging your questions. And I've said this before in webinars. It drives me crazy that organizations hire really smart people and then don't want to listen to them or don't give them a way yeah. to talk. Yeah. It's like, what? You spent all this time and money hiring all these really smart people. Um, so I think that that's key and in bridging that gap because ultimately, and, and your strategy plays into this too, um, your employees should, you should be, helping your employees understand again how to think act and feel and so for example i work with one company and they are um they build um a product for entrepreneurs and so they want their employees to, to act and think and feel like entrepreneurs they want them to be innovative they want them to um question the status quo they want them to feel like to act like an owner and solve problems that are in front of them. And so all their communication is all aimed at supporting those behaviors. Right. I, I think that that's a cool point that you brought up. Isn't that a, I think that's a Steve Jobs quote on, on hiring, hiring smart people. It makes no sense to hire uh, smart people and tell them what to do, rather do it the other way around. Yeah, yeah oh. and there's also a quote from Bill Gates, and this is, he says that your, your uh, customers that complain the most are your biggest sources of learning. And I feel mm. that it's the same for employees. Your employees yeah. who have the most questions, who are the most difficult, are the ones you need to pay attention to and not like yeah. shy away from. But you also have to empathize. You have to understand who the, who, you know, who your people are, you know, and what they're going through. At particular times, in order to to land messages well, and I think that's you know, as a uh, communicators, if we don't have that empathy, we're just always going to be making corporate videos. Yeah, well, it's basically uh, it, it kind of all boils down to the fact that uh, communication is the moment it becomes a profession, it's often confused with just sending out stuff, and communication yeah. is yeah. only communication when it's two way. Uh, and as long as I think you keep that really simple principle always in the back of your mind, you can barely go wrong, I would say. I agree. I, I, love that. I feel like every, every communicator I've ever spoken to has brought up this point that communication is only communication if it's two ways. So really kind of having that open kind of feedback culture, uh, super important to, to make sure that your videos land as well. All right. Like I said, we were unable to keep it to five, and we have one <laughs> bonus hack left. And I think uh, we could move on to that one because this is probably something that a lot of people are going to be interested in. I know the topic of measurement, especially in internal communications and employee communications, is super popular right now. And when we spoke about this, I, I think all of you guys had – not maybe not totally different approaches, but kind of differing approaches to on what mm -hmm. what dictates uh, a successful a successful video. So uh, Andrea, you you started started us off. So how about you start taking us home with this last one? Yeah, we were when we were rehearsing this. I said I'm the I'm the bread of the sandwich. I'm starting yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so. Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about, which we've already talked about, is the fact that it's a conversation starter. And one of the ways to measure success is the amount of conversation that you get going. And we just yeah. sort of talked about that, about feedback. So I'm always amazed when I see corporate videos that have the comments turned off. So yeah. encouraging comments, encouraging dialogue, using your managers to talk about the video and get feedback from people if they don't want to you know, raise the point. So, so that's, that's one of the things I really think is, is important is to get that dialogue going to have to, there's a really good book um, or a, a professor called Amy Edmonston, and she talks about psychological safety. And she has a list of questions that I often 
embed into like managers talking points or whatever, but there's things like, is there anything we missed or how does this make you feel? Those, so those questions are, are opening questions and they, they in each conversation. Um, so that's one. And then, and then the other thing that it gets back again to the, the other piece of bread or the, how I started off with your strategy. <laughs> What are you trying to achieve here? And yeah. so are you changing behavior and how are you going to measure that? And so, for example, if you're helping people use some new technology or, and, you know, work that Jonathan and I, I know are, are doing right now is getting people to come back to work in a way that they feel safe and comfortable and they, they um, behave in the way that you want them to behave. So is it, is it working? Uh, are those behaviors sticking? Are, do people understand what they need to do? Are they feeling the way you want them to feel? Do they feel safe? So those really, to me, are the, the things that you want to measure. It's to go back to your strategy mm -hmm. and figure out, okay, what are the things that I wanted to change and how, how have those things changed? Right. Okay. Uh, Andrea, real quick, you cut out there like really briefly at one point, right as you were oh. mentioning the, the book and author, Kate and Anne-Marie had a question about that. Can you repeat the name of the book and the author? Okay. So the book is called um, The Fearless Organization and the professor, uh, she has a lot of articles on HBR as well. Her name is Amy Edmonston. Awesome. And, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. She does brilliant stuff. I'm really a big fan. Awesome. Uh, guys, I, I know Mary Ellen, Jonathan, you guys also had your, your take on, on, on what a successful, what are the metrics of a successful, a successful video? Do you have anything to add to what Andrew just said? Oh, I was going to say every good comp person knows when their video has been a success. They just know because there's a buzz about it. There's a, you know, <laughs> people, you just know, uh, and, and and if you don't, then yeah, it, that's worrying. But you know, when a video is done well, I just yeah, it's, it's the feeling in the bones, I think. Uh, and then obviously backed up by stats is good, and then the actual behaviours or whatever initiative actually having numbers or people that signing up to it, all that good stuff. But any decent comms person knows when their video is being good, being successful. Right. Yeah, How about you, what, what would I need to add here? And yeah, I do think, you know, you can talk for hours about metrics like how many people watched and for how long did they stick around. But in the mm -hmm. end, it boils down to what did they do afterwards? And yeah. Then we're back at the conversation starter. So in, in our case, it's very often how many questions did we receive afterwards? And you can just ask, like, why don't you ask? Ask people. Yeah. Uh, do you feel safe to come back to work after watching this video? Exactly. Yeah. Or is yeah. there something else we can do to make you feel safer? Like ask. Yeah. If your employee, you pay their salary, just ask them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I really, I, I love this because none of you really focused on the concept of views. Like how many times was this video viewed? And I think a lot of times, you know, historically in communications, we've, we've sometimes been stuck in a rut where we're like, okay, how many times were my emails open? How many times were my messages read, whatever. But at the end of the day, none of that matters unless the desired action or behavior or feeling kind of carries over from that. So if well, you're- Nobody wants two views. Nobody wants two views. That's- <laughs> No, it's a yeah. clue, right? It's, if you're it's getting a, into the thousands, an then you don't need to count the rest. That's, that's just demoralizing, right? If you only have two views. <laughs> yeah, but it's really, well, I consider yeah. those metrics really the basics and you need to have the basics covered because it's true. If no one watches your video, then it's pretty clear. You don't even need to consider watching and uh, measuring whether your objective has been reached. Um, but I really like in the, at the end of today to focus on impact. Uh, oh, totally. Exactly, exactly. All right, guys. Well, with that, I think we can we can start wrapping up. I know we've yeah. we've covered a lot. We've covered a lot today. We've had a, we have some questions still in the chat. I think we can maybe follow up with that later on social media or, or directly with the people that asked it. But I know I think in the interest of time, uh, I know everybody's busy, so we can go ahead and go to our closing room. Go to our closing remarks here. 
Um, one thing I wanted to mention before I let you guys wave off is that we are having, of course, we, we have lots of other live sessions queued up here. And now next, we're bringing back one of our kind of our favorites, which is the great comms debate. So anybody that's been following us for a while knows that we host these kind of quarterly debates where we debate really big ticket communications uh, communications issues. And the next one is coming up. That's going to be great comms debate five. I'm going to put a link on the screen in just a second. If you click on that, don't worry, it won't take you. It won't take you away. You'll still hear us. Let me just type this out uh, before. Um, it's, it's hard to speak and type at the same time. Uh, there, there we go. So you should see that on your screen just now. Again, if you click it, don't worry. You won't be. You won't. You won't leave us just yet. But yeah, the great comms debate is coming back, and this time, the interesting thing is that we want you guys to tell us who you would like to hear speaking. So we don't have our roster set yet. We have some ideas, but we want to hear from our viewers who would they like to have speak at the debate. With that, again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. Thank you guys, uh, Andrea, Marielle, Jonathan, for, for being with us today. Uh, I think we got a lot of great little insights and tidbits on how to, on, on, on how to get video to perform for, for your organization. Um, any last kind of words of wisdom before we sign off here? Life's too short to make bad videos. <laughs> <laughs> Life's too short to make, sh make short videos. <laughs> no, <we can't. laughs> I'm happy to make a bit of fun while doing it. Exactly. exactly. Everyone Have should fun. enjoy yeah. yeah. I just wanted to thank everybody for tuning in, and uh, it was really a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed this um, this webinar. Thanks so much. Yes. Awesome. Well. Uh, anybody in the audience, if you have any questions for any of the speakers, their contact information is up on the screen. And of course, if you want to learn how you can use, use SMARP to, for example, deliver those videos. And I saw Francis had a question in the chat on apps that you can use to ask for feedback. You can use SMARP to do that as well. So if you have any questions on how SMARP can help you achieve that, uh, feel free to drop us a line as well. But for now, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Andrew, Marielle, and Jonathan for speaking. And yeah, we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks. Yeah. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.